Welcome to another recycled review. Apologies, it's been a wee while since the last one, <laughs> almost a year, but it does take quite a long time to get through 15 or more bottles of whiskey. However, I will try and make it up to you. Tune back in sometime next month and hopefully recycled review 17 will be hot on the heels of this one. Anyway, thanks for your patience and let's get started. Recycled reviews are all about the journey of a bottle. How much did we enjoy the neck pour? How did we get on with the bottle as it developed? And how did we feel as we sipped the last dregs from the bottle? Would we be replacing it again? Would we be spending the same amount of money? And I think it's becoming more and more of an issue as time goes on and whiskey becomes an ever more expensive hobby. That being said, there are fantastic value bottles still out there and we work together as a community to discover where they are. Where's the value coming? Where's the fairly priced whiskies coming? Where's the delicious, tasty whiskies coming? And who's bringing integrity forward? That's what we're going to focus on, of course. We'll do our very, very best. But the question that we're going to try and answer is, would we replace it again? Let's get started. <laughs> First up is a World Whiskey. This is Indri Trini. This is what they call uh, their three wood expression. It's 46% ABV and it says non-chill filtered and no added colour in the front, which is fantastic. Of course, being Indian whiskey, there's no age statement on this. However, this has been a fabulous discovery since I discovered it uh, at New Year. Thanks, Menno, I discovered this bottle of whiskey and I've managed to get through uh, let's say more than one bottle since then. I'm loving this stuff and the reason I'm loving it so much is because of that integrity presentation and because of the flavour that they managed to pack into this bottle. If you have not tried or connected with Indri Trini, I encourage you to please go out and correct that as soon as you possibly can. This has come from Piccadilly as the producer, so it joins Rampur and Ambrut and Paul John and the other Indian whiskey producers that we recognise, but they're really bringing something really quite formidable here, and that is a fairly priced, very, very delicious product at natural presentation. It's terrific stuff, and I can't get enough of it. I'm going to score Indri Trini an easy and comfortable eight out of 10. I would buy it again. <laughs> In fact, I did. And I've got another one on the go inside as well. Just terrific stuff. Okay. Something a wee bit closer to home. A Highlander, a Royal Brackler. This is their 12 year old. This is an interesting one because Royal Brackla was always available, let's say over recent years anyway, as core range product. However, it was always a wee bit neutered and a wee bit watered down. And with this 12 year old, they changed that. They brought the ABV up to 46% ABV. I think they actually put on the label somewhere that it's natural color and non-chill filtered, which is fantastic to see from Dewar's well done. More of this, please. This was very, very sherry forward as well. It just says sherry cask finish um, and it says all are also under it and it certainly the flavor profile was very like that the only negative thing i have to say about this royal brackler 12 year old is that it was ever so slightly kind of just flattened and and not really as, as detailed and as spiced and as alive as it could be that said this has gone from something that i would never normally have on the shelf something that you know i'd bought a bottle of the 12 year old i bought a bottle of the old 16 year old and they were just so weak and watered down that i just never went back again whereas suddenly with this new presentation at a good price, it is something I would go back to again. It was a wee bit pricey at launch, it was north of £60. That said, if we want natural presentation and if we want things to be good flavour forward, if we want whisky to be fairer to what malt whisky actually is, then perhaps we need to consider paying a wee bit more from time to time. I still would like this to be five or ten pounds cheaper. Still, I'm giving this one an eight out of ten as well and suddenly it's become something I would be happy to have on my shelf. 
wonder how long it's going to be before we see one of these in a recycled review again. I've had a lot of Springbank over the years of doing recycled reviews. Um, we always, oh my goodness, there's a wee drop in this. That's not going to go to waste. <laughs> We always enjoy our time with Springbank. It can be challenging at times. Batch variation is a thing. They seem to embrace batch variation as they should. It's malt whiskey, it's, by definition, it's a batch made product. So you can have cracking batches that you really love and other ones that don't hit you quite so well. However, they never, ever let you down. The baseline quality is always excellent. Even if it's something that you're not getting on with, it's still a super interesting product and you can guarantee that there's gonna be somebody out there that absolutely loves it. They've always been integrity forward. It's becoming harder and harder. We've kind of done it to death. We know what it's like. We know how difficult it is to get a hold of Springbank. However, I'm starting to notice the 10 year old I'm starting to notice um, the cocherins, the entry level cocherins and things like that start to become a lot more available and I hope that continues. Not so much for the stuff like this 18 year old, there's still a bit of a scrabble for it, it's just the way it is unfortunately. That said, this was one of my favourite, this is the November 2020 release. I thought this was a delicious Springbank 18, it's easy to see why people love the stuff. An easy 9 out of 10 whiskey for me and I'm sad that it's going to be a long time before I'm able to go out and replace this wee bottle. I enjoyed every minute of my time with it though. Fantastic stuff. Let's talk about something now that we can get hold of pretty easily in the UK and, and certainly in Europe. I don't know how far this has actually traveled. I don't know if it's made it across the Atlantic yet, but I hope that it does soon. This is Thompson Brothers TBBSW, Thompson Brothers Blended Scotch Whiskey. This is a six year old blended scotch at 46% ABV. Now this is fascinating stuff because it masquerades as a malt, it tastes like a malt. There's very little to give it away as being anything like a blend. It's fully sherried, it's very, very rich, it's very soft and easy to enjoy, but there's detail and there's spice and there's flavor in there too. It's just a fantastic whiskey. But the thing that makes it really compelling is that they've put this fabulous liquid out there at £34 for drinking. More, the more whiskies that we can get that's made for opening and enjoying, that it's made for doing what whiskey is actually meant to do, to be consumed, to make us remember what it is to be alive and just have such a privileged drink like this to enjoy. That's what the Thompson Brothers have tried to do here. It's fantastic stuff. It's not gonna last forever. I don't know how much of this there is about, but while it's here, let's enjoy it. This is fabulous stuff. I'd score this a comfortable eight out of 10. There's an argument that it should be higher than that given the price, 34 pounds. Just terrific stuff by the Brothers. Up in Dornock. Well done, guys. Let me drop in this. Fantastic. <laughs> this is wild turkey. Wild Turkey 101 specifically. Why have I got two bottles of this? Well, I tend to like bourbon at a higher ABV and this certainly fills that spot. A 50.5% ABV, that hence the 101, which is 101 proof, American proof. And it's terrific stuff. The reason I'm going through so much of this right now is you're getting that ABV in the UK at least and I hope where you are at very, very good prices. This is a, a fantastic, delicious, fully flavoured, rich bourbon that doesn't seem to be chased too much. It's available everywhere and that's maybe the reason for it. It's not particularly scarce. That's good for the drinker. This is excellent neat, really excellent neat, but it's also fabulous to mix. It makes brilliant old fashions. It makes brilliant long drinks. That ABV really helps it. The, the richness of flavour really helps it too. And at 23 pounds a bottle, that's what I'm paying for this in the UK. You just cannot beat it. Over the last year, uh, you can see I've managed to get through. Two bottles of this already. There's another one well on its way to being finished in there as well. It's just zero anxiety drinking whiskey. 
terrific stuff. Another 8 out of 10. You're going to notice as recycled reviews go on that the scores are going to stabilise. They're going to become much more up there at the 8, 9, 9.5. Will we ever have a 10? The reason for that is, is that I'm becoming much, much more choosy over the whiskies that I buy. These are the noisiest magpies. I need a catapult. I think the reason for that is because I'm buying much more carefully. I'm being much more selective over the whiskies that I buy. And when I do buy something that's a bit lacklustre or a bit neutered or less interesting, it tends to sit on the shelf longer, doesn't it? So it means that the chances of it making it into the recycled review basket is less and less. So I guess that that means that most of the recycled review stuff going forward is going to be better. And that's not a bad thing. It might make for boring scores, but it makes for good whiskey enjoyment. Let's see how we got on with this one. This is a bottle I paid far too much for. This was a, about £90, I think, the first bottle of this I bought. I managed to get another one for a wee bit less, about £85, I think. Uh, but this is from Longmore up in Speyside, and it's one of my favourite distilleries. I love the liquid that comes out of Longmore. When it's done well, it's fantastic. Occasionally, it can be a little bit hot, it can be a little bit nippy, but most of the time, a good bottle of Longmorn is a treat indeed. The 16 year old became more and more expensive. Uh, the distiller's choice, is that's what it's called, or distillery reserve or something. There's a non age statement one out there as well that I just wouldn't recommend to anyone. 40% ABV, it just doesn't do anything for the liquid at all. This one I took a gamble on. This is the Secret Space Side Selection Longmorn 18 year old. They're putting this out at 48% ABV. They've put on the front non-chill filtered. They don't talk about colour, but if they have got colour in this, it's just a wee dot. This is wonderful whisky. This is fabulous, gorgeous Longmorn. This has been put together with care, with craft, from fantastic stock. This will not last forever. This is the Secret Space Side. If you can get it at a reasonable price where you are, I'm happy to pay £85, £90 for a replacement of this. 18 years old, naturally presented, terrific example of, and especially today when it's really difficult to get a decent Space Sider, let's be honest, outside of Craig Ellachie or Glen Allachie or Ben Romack, you're kind of stuck. I've rhymed off three good ones there, but that's from a pool of 50. Speyside is ridiculously underrepresented when it comes to natural presentation and that's because it's most of the biggest companies involved there. They're after mass market, high volume stuff and they're not really interested in looking after the enthusiasts who are looking for a much more natural product. That's just the way it is these days. However, there are exceptions and this is one of them. It's a belter. This is a 9 out of 10 whiskey for me and yes, I've ordered a replacement. Here's some more good value sipping. This came out as a series of three. This is a blended malt whisky from Loch Lomond Group. This is Noble Rebel, uh, Hazelnut Harmony, Smoke Symphony, and this one, Orchard Outburst. Now, I kind of connected with the Hazelnut Harmony first and decided that I was enjoying that most. However, normally what betrays how much you're enjoying a bottle of whisky, how much you're sharing it because you're excited about it, that kind of thing, is the level in the bottle. <laughs> And so out of the three of them, this is the one I've finished first. And I would suggest then that this is probably my favourite. And there's an argument for that. I quite like the Smoke Symphony. Uh, the Rioja cask finish brings a wee bit of interest there. There is some detail in it. It's not bad. The Hazelnut Harmony has got a nice texture to it. I think there's quite, there's a nice weight to it. But it's the freshness and the brightness of this. I tore through this because of the weather, because it's summertime, and it just makes perfect sense. All three of them are about £39 a bottle, an excellent value for money and natural presentation. That means non-chill filter. <laughs> the cat, she's, she's gonna make an appearance soon. That means non-chill filtered, natural color. There's no age statement on this, of course. Blended malt whiskey, and just a great price. Love it, we need to see more of this. We need a score for it. Seven and a half. A nostalgic bottle for me. This is uh, 
Yeah, this is a Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and you'll notice that it's a bit of an antique label now. This label was changed back in 2017, I think they uh, upped their presentation. This is the old tombstone labelling. Um, this, I've been gifted this in the past by the guys over at the Scotch Test Dummies, but this is actually one that I managed to find in the UK. This is a 700ml import bottle. So there isn't the, the normal code uh, designation on this. I couldn't find out uh, the batch number for this one. Regardless, I can tell you the ABV is 139.4 proof and 69.7% ABV. Super powerful stuff. Very, very potent and yet ridiculously drinkable despite it. Bourbon, as I've said already, this just works so well at higher ABV. It just brings so much more to the table. When, when we're not kind of focused on drinking bourbon all the time, I think we can just kind of, we lump it all together and it's difficult for us to distinguish different styles of bourbon if you're a Scotch whiskey or an Irish whiskey drinker. However, when you sit down with something like this, it really commands every single ounce of your attention and you're dialed straight into the glass. It does take water and it's fun to play with it, reducing it in the glass, but honestly, just to enjoy this in tiny little half sips is just a, an absolute pleasure. It's just ridiculously good stuff. I would replace this, of course I would, but I'm not sure how easy it is to get a hold of in the UK. And it's quite expensive in the UK. I think we're paying north of £100 for ECBP now. Still, it's an easy nine. I would maybe even push this because of how much it means to my whiskey journey. I would maybe even, I would maybe even suggest that this could be a nine and a half. Just terrific liquid. Here's something less nostalgic and much more bang up to date. There's a lot of dregs in the bottles, Roy. This is from Glen Wivis. In the Highlands, this is their batch two 2018 vintage release. Lots of this about, this was a big, big release. Quite pricey, didn't purchase, <laughs> stayed away. In the end, heard a few good reports about it, got a bit curious, got to try a wee pour in the bar in the Bon Accord and decided, all right, okay, maybe it's worth it. 65 pounds for the first bottle, 62 pounds 50 for the second bottle, 45 pounds for the third because occasionally, because there's so much of it around, fantastic, occasionally it's now on offer. This is gorgeous new whiskey. Yes, you're gonna taste that it's a wee bit spirity. Yes, there's a wee bit of a youthful edge on it, but taste beyond that, taste what's behind it, taste, taste the tropical fruit, taste the kind of bready notes. Everything is telling you just how much care has been put into the distillate because the casks on this, which is very rare for new whiskey, the casks on this has been quite light. This is mostly first fill bourbon. Let's see if it tells us. Matured for three years, 60% first fill Tennessee whiskey, 25% first fill Oloroso, and 15% refill whiskey. That's the key. So 75% of this is first fill and refill, brilliant stuff, and then 25% first fill Oloroso. So the cask influence on this is really light. All that flavor, all that fruit flavor that you're getting is from the spirit, and that is super exciting for the future. So this has gone from being something I wouldn't recommend because of the price to something that's going to be added to the perma shelf. I'm so excited about Glen Wivisco in the future. Honestly, this is a 9 out of 10 whiskey for a new whiskey. It's ridiculously good. I have to, if you weave into the price, it drops down to an 8, an 8.5, eight of course. But if you know somebody that likes this style, that's going to be patient with it, that's going to search beyond the cask flavours and look for the flavours in the spirit, this is just a brilliant wee bottle to have. As I say, for a new whiskey, 9 out of 10. This isn't new whiskey, but there is an air of renaissance about it. Of course, it's Glen Allachie. Billy Walker and the team have taken over Glen Allachie and they're developing a, a real uh, interesting and curious path for the future. But in the meantime, what they've got to do is take all that inherited Casks after casks and casks and casks of just vanilla, just blend filler. And I know that sounds really dismissive and, and rude and there's going to be lots of fantastic whiskey in there, but generally it was made to go into a blend. It was made to be, it was made for efficiency's sake. What they've had to do there is invest fortunes into wood, 
good quality casks to bring that whiskey on to add layers of interest. And that means if you're going to be negative about Glenallachie, then you're talking about, oh, it's all about the wood and all the flavours that you're getting are cask notes and there's not much spirit there. And that's just inevitably how it's going to be. We're in that transitive stage with Glenallachie still. In the very near future, we're going to start to see Glenallachie made spirit coming out under the new team's stewardship. And that's going to be super interesting and that will be hugely different. In the meantime, we're dealing with this. The eight-year-old that I have in there is just now, they're 46% eight-year-old, fantastic, good value too. Ten-year-old cast strength can be up and down. Batch to batch is really quite variable, but often loved. The 12-year-old is rock solid. As long as you're not expecting it to be the best whiskey ever, it's a good, wee, easy drinking room pleaser. This 15-year-old was a disappointment for me. Started off not too bad. I wanted to be patient with it and give it time, but it just became more and more flat and more and more kind of dull and uh, less interesting as it went down. And it's all about that kind of syrupy, flat, emulsified sherry experience. There are people out there that love it. And I would still recommend this to certain people if I know that that's the type of whiskey that they enjoy. Soft, easy, flat, not particularly detailed or interesting whiskey. But this is one I would only give a six and a half out of 10 and I won't be replacing the Glenallachie 15 yet. <laughs> This one is a fantastic bottle of whiskey. It's 18 year old Scotch whiskey and it's, be, it's it just feels like it's become better and better and better to me as time's gone on. Now of course a lot of that's to do with me and how my palate's changing half the time. But I genuinely believe that the product coming out of the, what used to be known as the Burn Stewart distilleries, then it was the Distel distilleries, and now it's the CVH spirits or something distilleries. But I'm talking about Bunahavin, I'm talking about Deanston, and I'm talking about Tobermory. That's where this lead chick, 18 year old, is made. It's fabulous stuff and in fact Lechik 18 is my whiskey of the year for 2023, whatever you take from that. I'm loving it. I'm loving it because of the natural presentation. I'm loving it because of the intensity, the density, the depth of flavour, rich flavour, that lovely, lovely peatiness, but it's not all about the peat. It's much, much more than that. And I'm loving it because it's £85 as well. Don't know how long that's going to last for, but we can still buy a high quality, top tier, 18 year old single malt Scotch whiskey, fully natural for 85 pounds and 18 years old. That's kind of got to be something to celebrate right there. This is gorgeous for me. As long as I can buy it at that price, it's become a perma shelf item. I will replace this empty bottle and telling tales out of school, I have already. Loving it. Just terrific that this can exist. But it has to be asked, why isn't all 18 year old fully natural whiskey round about this price? It's not cheap to make whiskey at Tobermory Distillery. Anyway, it's that price for now. Let's enjoy it while we can. Nine out of 10 and well done, CVH. This is a, a blended malt. There's lots and lots and lots of blended malts about there just now and it's good to celebrate them when they're fantastic and good, good value. There's a lot of older stuff as well. This is kind of, it was rumoured to be at old Edrington stock. There was lots of it available for quite a few years. I'm going back to 2020, I think, to when I purchased this one. This is the Vega 33 year old. I actually used this bottle in a blind challenge. It didn't go down very well. Just because something says 33 years on it doesn't guarantee any quality whatsoever. Now, lots of the Vega releases have been excellent quality, wonderful, good value, easy drinking, decadent, delicious products. They've been fabulous. This one was a wee bit flat. Still, you're getting 33 year old whiskey. I paid £120 for this back in 2020. I think that's when I bought it and it was just great value. When I did eventually uncork it and use it in the blind challenge, it came last. It came last in a lineup of, there was a 23 year old Capardonic in the lineup, a 10 year old Port Charlotte. But that Thompson Brothers six year old blend came second. And the one that came first will appear in next month's recycled review. Anyway, blended malt can be fantastic, but 
don't be duped. Don't pay over the odds just because there's a big age statement on there. Try it before you can buy or at least go to a trusted source so that somebody can tell you that it's actually worth the price. Don't go buy bottle specs and age alone. Still decent stuff. I would give this wee 33 year old a six and a half and say, no, I wouldn't be replacing it even if it was 120 pounds again. Some other Vegas are fabulous. Here's a whiskey I love that I'm not gonna replace. Not for a while at least. This is owned by Diageo. Diageo own more Scotch whiskey distilleries uh, than anyone else. They own 29 malt distilleries. They also own Cameron Bridge and a part share in North British. And they're everywhere, they're a big concern. However, recently they're making very clear statements to enthusiasts that they are not interested in us. They are absolutely not. They are, originally their language was, we are a blending company. And that's changed. They are a malt company and they are a malt company as well as a blending company who's looking to premiumize all the product ranges. They're looking to go after the mass market, high volume and all of that stuff. And that's great, that's their business. And that's their right to continue to do. And it's our right to then make a decision based on that. Because when they hike the prices up, when they discontinue things, when they just message in a very, very difficult, awkward, uh, opaque way, we know that they're making statements that they're moving further and further away from us. Why does that smart? Well, it smarts because when the classic malts were launched in 1988, that was on the back of clear messaging from enthusiasts that we were ready to engage with good quality malt whiskies. Over the years, they've built their reputation, whether you're talking about Lagavulin or Talisker or Brora and even Port Ellen, you're talking about them building the reputation based on enthusiasts getting a hold of that liquid and understanding it, people becoming genuinely impassioned about it, becoming aficionados for certain distilleries and certain products. So to see it suddenly being priced away from us, cynically so, doubling in pricing, is very, very difficult to f for us to fathom. We don't know why they can't have a product range that can do things and be global brands and be very, very successful across the world and still be accessible to enthusiasts. This is still in that category. This is their eight-year-old Lagavulin. This is fantastic, 48% ABV. It doesn't tell us whether it's non-chill filtered or natural colour. We care not because it's gorgeous. However, the reason I'm not buying it is because I don't want to invest any more in a company that I feel at any moment it could just be taken away or double in price overnight. There are companies that I want to support. There are companies I want to get behind. The future of whiskey, rather than this, the legacy of whiskey and cynicism. Sorry for the rant. This is good whiskey. It's an easy eight out of 10. I just won't be replacing it. Here's what I'll be replacing. Into the wake, into the vacuum that all of those whiskies that we used to love are leaving comes new producers. This is a West Coast Highland malt whiskey and I think it could be the first time it's appeared on a recycled review, I'm not sure, but this is the 092001. This was the inaugural release from Ardnamurchan, £45. Immediately I went from being curious about Ardnamurchan to being an instant fan based on this bottle of whiskey. I've got a replacement bottle in there that's got about that much left in it, and at auction I was able to pick up a replacement of that. Why am I going after this 092001? Because it's the inaugural, because of the value? No, just because I want to relive that moment, that epiphany every time. Ardenworkin are continually bringing out more and more releases of fantastic products. The cask strength has joined the fray, they've got special releases coming out like the Paul Lanois champagne release, they've also got a brand new just coming out in the next couple of days, sherry cask release. They're just spoiling us for choice. And every time they woo us with quality and fantastic value, we are not talking about cheap whiskey, we're talking about fairly priced whiskey. I hope that Ardenworkin's making it close to where you are right now. There is a, there is a buzz about it. I, I refrain from using the word hype because hype means it's artificially elevated and that's not what's happening. It's consensus. This is fantastic, good quality spirit despite being young still. And the future, 
when it's looked after by people making this kind of whiskey at these prices is bright for us. Fabulous stuff. Eight and a half out of ten and just I'll always have multiple Ardemurkins on the shelf. Terrific stuff. And then we have the interesting whiskies. This black bottle of Loch Lomond. I know it's not available everywhere, but it's making its way across the globe. There's a green version of this, a black bottle with green labels on it too. And this is unpeated, the green label is a peated version. This is single grain whiskey but it's made from 100% malted barley. The reason that it has to be labelled single grain is that it's through a copper column still. Now that's different from the column stills that make grain whisky traditionally. This is a dedicated still in Loch Lomond just to handle malt whisky. So they've got their swan neck pot stills, their straight neck pot stills, and they've also got this dedicated copper column still. It's fantastic liquid and it goes out there at 22, 23, 24 pounds. Very inexpensive, 246% ABV. There's nothing to complain about here. So we're not just looking at new producers coming into that space that the legacy producers are leaving. We've also got Renaissance producers stepping forward as well, bringing fairly priced, interesting, good quality whiskies. And as these whiskies develop as the years go by and maybe the stocks become more and more mature, we're in very, very good, safe hands. There's a lot to be excited about. I would give this single grain, I prefer the peated one, if I'm honest. Not by much, but I prefer the peated one. But at 23, 24 pounds, there's no anxiety about drinking this and mixing it and having fun with it and playing with, playing with it. It's just terrific stuff. I would give this a seven and a half out of 10, and I look forward to seeing how this develops in the future. That's more than a dreg in that one. Then we've got the development from producers that have been around for a wee while now. Ben romax has been around for a long time, 1898 or something it used to say on the bottle, I think it was 1898 anyway. Um, they've been around for a long time, but it wasn't until the early 90s that Gordon McPhail took over things and an independent bottler um, is going to change the way that the whisky is produced. They very quickly set about establishing it as a brand and they've developed that brand in the core range as time's gone on. So now they're getting really quite exciting. We've seen a decent range of age statements from them. We've got the 10 year old, the 15 year old, we've got the 21 year old. The problem with them all are that they're just a wee bit they're excellent whiskies, but they're just holding back on us, aren't they, at 43% ABV. How resplendent could they be if the, it was jacked up just that wee bit? There's not much in it between 43 and 46, and the ability to put it out there unchill filtered and much more natural. However, I don't want to complain when they're doing that with other ranges. This is their contrast series. This is their, specifically, the peat smoke sherry cask. So this is that wonderful, hedonistic, aromatic mix of sherry cask and peat that just seems to work so well. Of course, if that's your thing, but for me, if I'm in the mood, it's very much my thing. I love peat and sherry. This was an excellent bottle of whiskey. I really enjoyed my time with this. 46% ABV. All the details are on this. It's non-age statement, but they tell us the vintage that it was distilled, and they tell us the bottling year as well, 2012 to 2021. So we're looking there at an eight or nine year uh, old product. Just terrific. Easy to recommend, easy to enjoy. They've also got the Cara Gold, they've got the organic, they've got the, the regular peat smoke version out there. This contrast series seems to be them playing. Still a wee bit left in that. Playing with the idea of bringing more natural products for enthusiasts. Great stuff. I would give this an eight and a half out of 10 and I would replace this peat and sherry contrast from Ben Romack. Terrific. So there we go. I've got a wee dram to enjoy before I go and shoot another recycled review directly on the back of this one. I don't know when I'll get around to editing it, but it will be a hell of a lot quicker than how long you've had to wait for this one. If you are looking for some whiskey content to get involved in while you wait for the next recycled review and beyond, then remember that every Thursday night, 
although I'm on summer shutdown right now, but normally from late August and then going forward every Thursday night from quarter to ten onwards, you can join me in the V-Pub where we just get together for a live session uh, and enjoy some whiskey time covering various topics. You can pick all of those up on the replay on the channel as well. More than that, you can also pick up lots of daily reviews over at dramface.com. Uh, some fantastic things happening at Dramface, a great, great writing team all working together to bring out wonderful content and daily reviews and there's also a podcast to pick up there as well there's lots happening remember that the bigger whiskey tube the bigger whiskey verse is all out there talking and chatting about whiskey too and if i've found interesting reviews that i trust i'll have linked them underneath for all of the whiskies that i've shared with you there so have a wee look at that and remember that it's not ever just one man's opinion thank you for your patience waiting almost a year for this recycled review Slanch of Cheers, whiskey folk. <laughs> <laughs>